All right, part four or five or something of the cam tower nightmare. I'm gonna put the timing back together. I got a new belt, new timing belt. Gonna reuse the old balance shaft belt, still good. Gonna show you all the timing marks. Not much else I can show you. So for the timing belt, the cam, cam gear notch has to align with that notch on the housing. Make sure those are aligned. There are no marks on the crank gear. So you need to look in the, in the reference sensor area. Down in there, I'm not gonna be able to show it on camera, but there's a timing hole and there are marks in there. And there's a third place where you can look and that is on the bell housing. There is a square notch on the flywheel that will align with an opening on the bell housing. And I'll show you that in a minute. I'm gonna to switch to the GoPro. So hopefully you can see the square notch in the flywheel, in the bell housing right here. And the flywheel is the big round disc right behind that. Hopefully you can see the notch in the flywheel. It's currently a little bit left of the notch in the bell housing. So I'm gonna have to turn the engine a little bit to get that to line up. And you gotta make sure that square is directly in the center. Otherwise, the timing could be off by a tooth. Just removing the timing belt tensioner so I can get the old belt off. There are three nuts. And they all have washers on them, so be careful you don't lose those. This end cog is gonna get stuck on this eccentric roller, so you gotta loosen that. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about because it's, it's just too dark under here to get video. So as you can see, it's got these three nuts here. Those are the ones you gotta remove. And you also need to, need to have this um, take your uh, channel locks or whatever, uh, untension it, and then at the same time tighten these two bolts, and that'll hold it all together, and that's how this will slide off. This is a bit dirty, but the bearing is still smooth as glass in this thing, and the spring is still working fine. I'm going to clean it up a bit before I reinstall it. Now you can work the timing belt out of here. Pretty easy. You do need to remove this one metal. Of course it's stuck on the one part. You gotta remove this metal guide here. Now finally the belt will come off. You have to work it out around the pulley, or the lower cog. And there you go. All right, now you can feed the new belt back in. I'd recommend only brand name belts like Before you wrap it around the cam gear, double check the uh, timing marks on the crank and make sure the belt is actually in the teeth. The timing hole near the reference sensor, there's like a blade in there and on the flywheel there's like a line and the letters OT. You gotta get that line to line up with the blade. I'm not really sure if the line's supposed to be slightly in front of the blade or what, but that's something you gotta look up because I, I can't get in there with the camera. And there are much clearer pictures available online. I actually sprayed a little silicone lubricant on here. I 
Also, if you wanted to change, if you wanted to change the water pump, it is right here. All you do is take this plastic off, unbolt it, bolt the new one on. You're good to go. But I just changed the coolant in here. I know this water pump works. I felt how smoothly it spins and everything. There's no loose looseness to it, and. I regularly check my coolant temperature as I'm driving, so I'm not worried about it. Plus these water pumps are like 300 bucks. If it ever goes, I'll just get towed home. And I'll install a new one. Time is right. Tensioner back into place. got to use your common sense and keep checking the marks especially the one under the one at the uh, reference sensor and the one at the flywheel because the crank moves very easily you can move it with your hand no problem so you just got to keep checking that and now on this side there's not going to be any tension because the tensioner is not tensioned yet before you let the tensioner tension the belt this is an auto tensioner uh, make sure you bolt it back on to the car. Now when the tensioner isn't tensioned you can only reach two of the nuts that hold the tensioner assembly on there so you just tighten those then let the tensioner fly and do its thing and tension the belt automatically. The tensioner is automatically going to tension the belt. It is done. And now you can tighten the bolts. Don't over tighten them, you don't want to strip them. I trust this tensioner, believe it or not. Uh, you could also use a Cricut tension tool to check the tension. Loosen these bolts, put the tensioner where it needs to be, and measure with the Cricut tool and then tighten the bolts when the belt is where it needs to be. Not that hard. Now I can put that final bolt nut on there. All these nuts and bolts on the tensioner should be torqued to 10 to 15 foot pounds. So to actually check the, me the tension measurement on the 
on the belt, you either need a Cricut tensioner tool or a 9201 Porsche tension tool. The tension on a used belt should be 2.7 plus or minus 0.3 and on a new belt it should be 4.0 plus or minus 0.3. I've read that this, this spring tensioner on, in a lot of cases will not tension a new belt to uh, that tolerance of 4.0 plus or minus 0.3 unless the spring is released and then the engine is rolled a degree or two and then the tensioner is tightened down. So I guess that's what I'm gonna do. I didn't do that last time. Or maybe I did, I don't know. So the timing belt is on. Before going further, I am going to turn the engine over by hand several times and make sure it spins smoothly and doesn't get caught on anything. Meaning I'm gonna make sure no valves are hitting the pistons or anything like that, so. I'm gonna say we're good there. Now the balance shaft belt can go on. So the upper balance shaft, the O on the cog gets lined up with that notch. There is another notch on the cog, but I don't know what it's for, just ignore it. The notch on the bottom one gets lined up with that tab that sticks up out of the plastic cover and then you use this eccentric cog to tension the balance shaft belt see those moves you move it to where you need it hold it with a wrench and then tighten this nut and then there's this then there's this eccentric guide roller that you adjust the same way that you adjust the tensioner and there should be about a credit card's gap between this and the belt once you're all done. Now the routing of this belt goes something like this. It goes around here, around the crank. Around the tensioner. And what the hell is that? Oh. And then around the tensioner and the gap that I was talking about should be between this side of the belt and this side of the roller. Another thing to consider is that you should replace these rollers and tensioners at the same time that you re replace the belts. But I just analyze them and if they're still good I just keep using them but most people will recommend to change them no matter what. And the factory recommends that as well. And this belt doesn't get tightened that much. You should be able to twist it 90 degrees here on the side and it should be tight enough at that point.
All right, so now I can put the timing covers back on and all the air intake stuff. And I, we, then we can try and start it up and see what happens. I'm not gonna film putting the timing covers back on. They're just special 10 millimeter bolts. And the serpentine belts are real easy. Well, hopefully it runs, hopefully it starts, hopefully the engine doesn't blow up, hopefully the valve train is quieter. If it's not, I'm going to get over it pretty quickly and just drive the car until it blows up. loud tapping you heard initially was I believe that was one that one lifter that was a little soft they take time to fill up with oil and you're gonna hear that loud tapping until they're full of oil all that smoke you saw coming out of there was all the oil that dripped onto the header uh, that was all that burning off so all of that is gone now this video is mostly just part of a documentary about my cam tower nightmare. So I'll have a link in the description for anyone that needs more detailed information, such as how to use the tension tool if you have one, and how to deal with the hydraulic tensioner if you have an 83 to 86 944 or a 968. Make sure you retension the timing belt between 1500 and 3000 miles. That's right, you have to take all those covers back off and recheck the belt. I don't remember doing that seven years ago when I replaced my belt last and I drove it for three years, probably put 20, 30,000 miles on it and I uh, didn't have any problems and I didn't reten I don't think I retentioned it. It's running better than it ever has for me. This car's from 1988. I don't know what it's supposed to sound like, when, it, but to me it sounds really smooth. The balance shaft belt, I think it's a little bit too tight. I'm going to have to go in there and loosen it just a little bit. You can probably hear it on the video. It sounds like a, a tight belt. I installed an idle air screw. It never had one before. The idle is mostly controlled by the DME. It's all electronic, but the idle screw does make a small difference. It just had a hose in, in the idle screw hole, and the hose had a screw in it, and they the previous owner plugged the hole that way and I just used it as it was. And it worked okay and now it's back and better than ever. I'll put a link in the description where you can get a timing or a idle screw. Please subscribe for more videos like this and if you liked the video hit the like button and thank you for watching.